David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. Today I have for you a brand new pen from Wancher, which has just launched via a Kickstarter campaign. Wancher has successfully used Kickstarter in the past to launch a number of new pens. They most notably did this with their Arushi Dream Pen model, which turned out to be very popular within the fountain pen community. Wancher's latest venture is for a pen they are calling the Shippo or Seven Treasures. What I'm going to do today is go over the unique parts and features of the Seven Treasures, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for, show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Thanks go out to Wancher for providing one of these pens in advance of the Kickstarter campaign for review. The pen arrives in this nice softwood box. Uh, inside there was a couple pieces of marketing information and then the pen sits on a bed of velvet in this nice sleeve. Now, Wancher has used these exact boxes for some of their other models, uh, but I'm uncertain if this will be the exact packaging for this pen or if it was just how they sent this advanced pen out to me. Inside the sleeve, we have the pen. This is the Wancher Shippo, or Seven Treasures. Uh, it's called such in reference to the artistic adornment on top of the cap, which I'll show you here in a bit. Uh, Shippo actually means seven treasures in Japanese. Uh, this is a Japanese term used for enamelware, and it's also called Japanese cloisonne. Uh, the seven treasures refers to these seven ingredients used in the making of Shippo, which is a completely a handmade process. The body of this pen is actually made from rolled up paper and cotton, which are soaked in Bakelite. Uh, Bakelite is a phenolic formaldehyde resin. Uh, this is a plastic that during the process of making it, the odors can actually be harmful to humans. Uh, it's a material which is very strong and durable and doesn't conduct heat. Uh, it's a material used in place of a lot of standard plastics and is commonly used in jewelry as well. Uh, this pen will actually be available in three color choices, red, orange, and this black. Uh, let's start by taking a look at the top of the cap and the distinguishing feature of this pen, the Shippo itself. Uh, you can see it's close to a semicircle sitting on the top and it's encircled by a gold plated ring. Uh, you can see here the depth of the material with blacks and red flakes encased in the glass. And there's even some gold flake in here as well. Since each of these finials are handmade, uh, they are each going to be a bit different. I'm not sure if you'll be given a choice as to what you will receive though. Here are some examples of the black, red, and orange models. You can see how the Shippo varies a bit between the models. I'm a fan of the one on the black, the one with the, uh, the black and the larger flakes of material. I think that one looks pretty sweet. Uh, while in China, I actually visited a cloisonne factory, but there is a difference between Chinese and Japanese cloisonne. Uh, the Chinese version is smoother and more of solid colors with distinct borders. However, Japanese cloisonne has more of what they call an orange peel texture to the enamel and it has more depth. Uh, they both are beautiful in their own rights. And I'll actually show an example of Chinese cloisonne during the writing sample. Then we have the clip. Um, it's functional, uh, but it is a little bit on the short side, but not too short that you have any issue putting it in a standard size shirt pocket. Uh, it angles up just slightly, and then it's straight for the remainder of the cap until you reach a dual set of rounded bands. The cap then tapers down just slightly, and then there is a very slight step down to the barrel. Uh, the barrel tapers down at an even angle until it reaches another gold band and the end of the barrel is flat. The cap unscrews. Now there is a, a spring tensioned inner cap here which serves to create a better airtight seal on the nib helping to prevent it from drying out. But the spring on this particular cap is a little bit more prominent than you might have experienced on pens such as the Platinum 3776. It does take a little bit of getting used to. You just need to push it a little bit in order to cap the pen. It's not a big deal. It's just something you'll need to get used to that's a little bit different from most other pens you might have in your collection. Once you navigate the cap, you are presented with this number six Yovo gold plated stainless steel nib. The nib will be available in extra fine, fine, medium, and broad. Uh, it'll also be available with Wancher's in-house 18 karat gold nib, which I have tested and is very nice. 
And here's a look at the ebonite feed. You'll actually have a choice between plastic or ebonite feeds. The ebonite feed will be an additional cost, but it will be available in either black or red variants. The section is slightly concave and transitions past a gold band into the threads, which I don't find to be sharp or uncomfortable if your grip should rest on them. And then there's a medium sized step up to the barrel. I find the Shippo to be very comfortable in the hand, and while it's a decently sized pen, uh, it is still fairly light. I also care for the thickness of the section. The pen is plenty long enough to use unposted. The cap does post, but I wouldn't recommend it for a couple of reasons. First of all, it does not post very deeply, so it extends the overall length quite a bit. I find it back weights the pen, as well as throwing off the balance a bit. The main reason I wouldn't post this pen, however, is that this right here is a piston knob, and this is a piston filler pen. Uh, and with the cap not posting very deeply on here, it's basically sitting on the piston knob, and when you're playing around with it, posting and unposting the pen, there's a risk of you inadvertently engaging the piston, which could potentially expel some ink, which in the most technical of terms is very bad. Now, something unique about this pen, which might be a feature on other pens, but it was something that was new to me, is that the section here can be removed. The idea here is that when you're inking up this pen, you can remove the section to prevent ink from having or coming into contact with the uh, section. Now, I don't believe it matters as much on this black model, but there was a potential for ink to maybe stain the red or orange models if it stays in contact for an extended period of time. So I believe that I would recommend you utilizing this removable section feature when inking the pen, then you simply clean this part off and you can attach the section again. Now, I'm recording this prior to the Kickstarter campaign for this pen actually launching, uh, but the information I currently have is that the Wancher Shippo or Seven Treasures will be selling for the $210 to $280 range, depending on some of the options you choose. After the campaign is ended, then this pen was going to be retailing on the Wancher site in the $300 to $350 range. From what I understand, the pledge uh, for this pen at the lowest price will be limited to 50 units. So if you care for the least expensive price for this pen, then you'd want to act sooner rather than later. And as a disclaimer, as I mentioned, since I'm recording this a bit early, some of those pricing details potentially have changed. I'll put a link in the notes below to the Kickstarter campaign so you could check it out for yourself. Uh, if the lowest price is indeed $210, then I feel that's a very reasonable price for what you receive with this pen. It has some classic looks, it's made from a unique material, it incorporates a handmade artistic element, and as you'll see in the writing sample, it performs very well. So there's a lot to like about this intriguing addition to the market. So now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons, and a writing sample. To begin with, I wanted to share what some Chinese cloisonne looks like. Uh, you can see here that it's more defined, like I said. Basically, they end up laying down this wire and then they fill in the material with different colors. And so you can see that it is much more defined uh, as, and has more edge to it, as opposed to something that's a little more free form, like the Japanese cloisonne. But they're both very beautiful in their own rights. Here we go with some size comparisons for the Wancher Shippo 7 Treasures. Uh, here it is with a Wancher Dream Pen. Uh, and then here it is with a, a, a pen that's a very similar in size, which is the Kiei Irushi, which is kind of unique because it has this leaf that's actually incorporated into the barrel. Uh, and that's another pen from Wancher. Uh, and then also here it is with a Platinum 3776 Carnelian. And in regard to some other pens, here it is with a Pilot Custom Heritage 92. Uh, here it is with a Sailor 1911 Large in the sea glass finish. And then here it is with a Delta Dolce Vita Oro. In regard to some uncapped comparisons, uh, here it is with the Wancher Dream Pen and the Platinum Carnelian and then also the Sailor 1911 Large.
So here we go with the writing sample for the Wancher. And this is the Shippo. Seven Treasures. And this is a broad nib, and it's a very generous broad nib. It does lay down a lot of ink. And the ink that I'm using here today is Pilot Eroshizuku And this is Yamabudo. This is what the ink looks like. Uh, it's one of my favorite purples. Uh, this is what it looks like in regard to Diamine Claret, as well as Monteverde Blueberry Muffin. This is what the bottle looks like. This is one of my favorite ink bottles, the uh, Pilot Orochizuku bottles. That little teardrop at the bottom just gives it a lot of style and I like the looks of this. And plus, it's a nice wide bottle and you can get just about any nib in here and uh, be able to get a lot of the ink out of here as well. So here we go with the rest of the writing sample. Uh, as I mentioned, I find this bold nib, uh, this broad nib, to be very smooth. You're not going to get tons of line variation out of this steel nib, but it does lay down a lot of ink. And I haven't had any issue at all with the ink flow. Uh, in regard to the, that ink flow, you can see here that it flows very nicely. In regard to reverse writing, It's still fairly smooth. In regard to some fast writing, there's no issues whatsoever. So there we have the Wancher Shippo 7 Treasures. Uh, I'll be interested to see how this Kickstarter goes because it, it's an interesting pen, it's a piston filler, it has some classic looks, uh, and then even it has a little bit of color here on the end that looks very nice. So until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.